<laughs> I'm here with Helen Gordon and she's um she's gonna show us a few things on the Sweet 16. Thanks Paula. <laughs> so Helen now we wanted to talk about um, a few of your different designs okay. and one of the first ones we were going to do was the um, the swirl but it's with sort of straight lines. Yeah I call it the abstract spiral so it's still based on the way that you make a spiral which is by making a number six Yep. but on our way in we're going to do little straight lines and give it a geometric look. Okay. And uh, the main thing for people to remember is to to get a point, to get a sharp angle, mm -hmm. you hesitate your hands just that little bit and then you will get an absolute sharp, which is sometimes yep. you want that, sometimes yep. you don't, but in this case we do. So you're not actually stopping, you're just sort of hes like yeah. hovering. You're hovering your hands. The yep. machine keeps going, but your hands are just pausing to that little split second. Okay. So. Can I ask you while you start, at what sort of speed do you like using your Sweet 16 at? Uh, I tend to stitch at about 65. Okay. Because I'm you know, quite confident with my yep. hands and so that gives me a good stitch length. Okay. For most of people at home, I'd say they're starting at 45 or 50. Yep. And then as you get more confident with your hands, you yep. increase the speed of the machine. Okay. Okay, so here we so go. let's have a go. <laughs> so you're still leaving a little bit of space in between That's each right. line at the start. Now I can see my tension's not great there. Yep. I've got white coming up on okay. the bobbin, so I'm going to release my tension a little bit. Okay. And hopefully we'll stop that from happening. Yeah. But you can see I still made my number six. Right. And then I've worked my way back out again. But yes, you do have to leave that gap. Mm -hmm. So when you're practicing, in your mind you'll have to tell yourself leave a gap, leave a space, leave yep. a path, whatever the mantra is that you get that works for you. Mm -hmm. You will then um, be able to leave that track to come back out again. Okay. One of the things that I had trouble with when I first started doing swirls, people would say do a six, but I would find it really hard to feel where that the tail of the six was. So do you have quite a small tail on your six when you start? I guess it's only a small tail here. Yeah. The main secret, what happens is people now from this point uh -huh. might stitch straight across here okay. and do another six, and that's not, you don't want that gap. Okay. When you've come out of your six, keep tracking around the outside of it, looking ahead for a space for the next six. Ah, okay. So keep travelling around the outside, yeah. keeping that band with the So you're still about using the, the distance same. the same? Yep. Yeah. And then looking ahead for a space, there's a space. Beautiful. You can approximately see my six, yep. working into the middle. Coming back out. Now keep travelling around the outside. It. Okay, so you're not left with any big holes like no, you would be you if you had a look, big tail. That's right, you want it to look filled. Yep. Now by the same token, I might finish this area here. Let's say I I'm, I'm feel like I'm going to be stitching down this direction, but I'm really uh -huh. worried about making sure I fill that bit there. Okay. I might travel all the way around those to get there. And if I uh -huh. keep that width about the same and just echo around, yep. it'll look like part of the plan. Exactly. Right it'll look like, it, yeah. So you're not actually going to go back and fill in that section. You're using that as an echo to get to a new spot. To get spot. to it. And now I've got a space to do my six. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that six is a backwards, sideways, upside down <laughs> six. It's still a six. Yep. So you're using echoes as much as swirls to fill in that piece. Yes, and I think of them as travel. Yep. I use the word when I'm teaching travel because a lot of people will say, oh, I get stuck in a corner. Okay. I never understand actually how you can be stuck in a corner. No matter what, I can travel mm -hmm. and do something that looks like part of the, the, the original, original plan yep. to get to where I want to go. And okay. if you really are stuck in the corner of your quilt, well, you can travel down the edge of the quilt and disappear. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, okay. So I'm still going to travel around this one to get to my next area. So really you are just hovering at those points? Yes, my hands are hesitating. Yep. Just hovering for that little split second. It's not long, mm -hmm. but in that split second the needle does three or four or five stitches and then yep. you will get quite a sharp change sharp of direction. Change. Yep. If I go back to normal spirals, I'll show you the difference. Yeah. In a normal spiral, of course you want your hands moving smoothly to mm -hmm. keep it as curvy as possible. Yep. So there's no, no hesitation. It's keeping that flow going the whole time. 
And are you using the foot of your Sweet 16 as a guide to, to Look, some distance? people do, but no, I'm actually not. I, I will if you mention it, I do. Yep. But I'm actually just eyeballing it the whole time. I'm okay. just judging. And what people have to learn too is that when they first try free motion, they are concentrating so much on their hand mm -hmm. movements. And after a while, you're actually just looking at the pattern and wanting to just make that pretty pattern and not thinking, uh, not overly thinking mm -hmm. the hand movements. So where are you looking? Looking. Are you looking ahead? Or I'm looking you... ahead because yep. the needle, even if I'm not looking at it, it will stitch. Okay. So I'm actually looking <laughs> ahead and I'm thinking ahead as I come around and say here, I'm looking ahead for a space. Okay. And I find a space, to spiral. I launch into it. <laughs> this is where some people might find using a, a marker of some kind useful. Mm -hmm. If they're looking at this big blank area and it's a bit daunting, yep. they might put a few circles on there as a reminder okay. of where to go and that can just give them a bit of confidence okay. for aiming the next spiral. So how do you change directions now that you're in that corner? How do you change to get out still doing that, that okay. curved spiral? So obviously I can't fit one in here and that's another yep. mistake people will make is think I must do a spiral yep. and they'll squeezy something in there that looks pretty ugly. Yep. So just <laughs> echo back around. Okay, so with a sharp point, yep. the same as what you had in the middle. That's right, so now you've got the two sharp points. Okay. Same again, maybe I've gone, oops, I forgot to spin off. <laughs> I might come back again. Looking ahead, now I see my space. Okay. So those, by you keeping it the same as the sharp point in the centre and the sharp point in the outside, you're creating that consistency. That's right. Beautiful. Oh, just did a square. <laughs> Now I'm I'm keeping you know that even gap the whole yep. time and I'm actually not touching any of my previous stitching but what That's if right. I came back in now and actually touched back onto that line mm -hmm. That's kind of the way that I've been finding I do spirals better I like doing that straight line Closing by touching something mm -hmm. yeah There's no right or wrong it just gives a different look it's kind of like a, a handwriting, isn't it? You get your absolutely, own style. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. What I do like, though, with this, when I'm um, teaching some of my painting classes, yeah. the fact that's a continuous line, we mm -hmm. can now come back in and paint into that track. Oh, and fabulous. when it is continuous, yeah. you can't go wrong. You'll be able to paint that and there'll be this positive and negative kind of business. Yeah, that would look fantastic. It does look good. It shows off the stitching. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you can either be painting into that, or if this was on a much larger scale, you could be um, stippling and adding more stitching oh, into fabulous. that. fabulous. So yeah. you could put little pebbles or something inside could, each yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. It's a lot of fun. And what I like with the painting too is that um, here I'm working with a fine thread. Mm -hmm. When I paint into it, you're now looking at a quarter inch wide yep. of impact of design. So I'm getting getting my design to show off more quite frankly yeah. by, by giving it more impact fantastic so that's really beautiful thank you so much you're Helen, welcome. for your time you're welcome thank you